No matter what shape your skin is in, we got the real Hello, welcome to our QA session. We try to address questions that you've asked and questions that I get asked often by patients and potential patients. Today I'll be talking about uh, leg veins, what treatment options exist. That's the most common question I get asked uh, when it comes to spider veins. So spider veins, which will be these unsightly veins you may have in your legs or, or thigh, is what we're talking about today. We're not talking about the uh, huge uh, vein problems that you get that can result in uh, debilitating symptoms, uh, wounds. Those require a whole different type of treatment that's outside the scope of this discussion today. What I'm talking about today is the spider type of veins that most most people that are working on the street that are affected with this condition have. So that's the most common presentation where you have these very fine veins in your leg or thigh uh, and mostly the, the problem is actually cosmetic. The patient does not like what it looks like. Uh, they are ashamed or they are very shy of going to the beach and uh, revealing their legs as a result of that. And that's usually why they want it treated. Often there are no symptoms. There may be very mild uh, sensations, but that's usually not the problem. But uh, patients will have that. It affects mostly women, but it can affect all gender. My rule of thumb in deciding what type of treatment you should have uh, is we go by the width, the thickness of the vein. So if the vein is less than three millimeters, three millimeters, I don't know if this shows well in the video, it's a very small uh, uh, space. So you have three millimeters will be about right there. Okay, so that's quite a small width. So less than three millimeters, you should really be treating with, uh, I choose to treat them with laser basically. So it's an external beam of laser that you treat the skin of the affected area and it targets the blood vessel underneath and uh, cinches it, basically kills the vein. My laser of choice is the NDIAG laser, which is uh, very effective. In a short study we did in my residency years, we found it to be more effective than the its competition and they have uh, the NDIAG laser is the 1064 nanometer wavelength laser. The other types of lasers can either be uh, the dyed laser 800 uh, nanometer or the uh, Alexandrite 750 nanometer. We in that study years ago found that uh, the NDIAG laser was uh, more effective. Uh, there's a little bit of more discomfort involved with it but nothing that cannot be overcome by the use of uh, topical uh, anesthetics which we use in our patients and sometimes we'll even give you uh, oral uh, sedatives if that is what it takes to to get it to do it but you want something that is effective and NDIAG is effective. The other advantage of the NDIAG laser is that uh, because of the long wavelength it's more suited for all skin types so if you are dealing with uh, a tan skin or somebody of skin of color you're less likely to run into problems with the NDR compared to the others although that's still a possibility with all lasers uh, where you want to minimize minimize the risks now leg like veins that are wider than three millimeters or three millimeters or more those veins are best treated with injection injection entails using very tiny needles you cannulate the vein and squirt in a sclerosing agent. Now there are different types of sclerosing agents, but there are very few that are approved by the FDA for use for that indication in the United States. Uh, the one I favor is the polydecanol. I believe it's manufactured by Bioform these days. It's called as Clara. Now that is FDA approved for that and we use it. But other agents could be used like sotradicol. You can also use concentrated or hypertonic saline as well. It's good to stick to the uh, FDA approved agents. Now injecting means you cannulate it. You have to thread this needle into the lumen of the vein. Uh, so it actually makes sense because the bigger veins are easier to cannulate so there's less chance of missing the, uh, the lumen of the vein and going into the tissue because if you do go into the tissue if the syringe or the needle does not uh, stay in the lumen of the vessel and instead ends up in the tissue around it and you inject this chlorosan, the risk is that you're going to get tissue death around there so you may end up with necrosis of the skin, death of the skin tissue 
and you may end up with an ulcer a big wound and that obviously is not a desired effect uh, complication so for veins or spider veins that are bigger than three millimeters it's actually easier to cannulate and avoid that complication so it makes sense also that these are the large veins that do not respond very well to lasers and that uh, you inject them it's almost as if nature tailor made this classification for you it's easier to cannulate less complications and the lasers don't work as well anyway Whereas when you have very tiny veins, less than three millimeters, they're actually more difficult to inject. Uh, so there are more chances of complications if you are injecting it with sclerosant. So that's it. In a nutshell, less than three millimeters, lasers. Greater than three millimeters, injection. My rule of thumb when used, uh, a patient sometimes can know what to expect in terms of uh, what treatment they are going to end up getting. Obviously, this is just what I do in my clinic. And whichever doctor you see uh, has the final call and you have to defer to him or her uh, for what kind of treatment you, you end up getting. Both treatments, sclerosans uh, injections have been around for ages and uh, there are different forms of doing that and uh, you know different types of how to sclerose and how to inject that's a whole big scope of conversation in its own but not shell classification is what we are talking about today. I hope this answers your question. Thank you very much.